remember when this happened. I reckon everyone remembers what happened during this. What? So, September 11th, you remember it, right? Yeah. So, I remember waking up my dad and telling him America's being attacked. My dad goes, go back to bed. You have a bad dream. <laughs> <laughs> While he's lighting a dart in his sleep. I was, like, I was like, what fucking movie? I remember like, what fucking movie is this? I remember being on the phone to some girl and it's Optus like 20 minutes for free. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I'll call you back. Something's interesting on TV. And like, I'm like, is this real? Is this, this is a movie? Yeah. And then you change the channel. It's on every single channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're like, hey, dad, America's being attacked. Go back to bed. <laughs> yeah, the commission was yeah, like, he's like, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> he's like, you're wrong. And I'm like, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm wrong. Like, it's yeah. on every news <laughs> channel. It's still wrong. <laughs> you woke him up from slumber, man. <laughs> you're wrong. No, I remember it, man. 100% I remember it. I remember like going to school the next day and just, pff, man, it was like just quiet. It was sombre. Yeah. Because no one had ever faced anything like that. And, and it was a, Yeah. It was the first time internet was at a prolific point where it could get spread quick. I remember there was... so Because uh, we lived ne- next to the airport, something was going on the next day at the airport. So yeah. flights were being redirected and they were flying so close to their house. I remember like needing to go to the bathroom and like the plane flying so low that the house started shaking. And I was going to say... I shit myself. I was like, this is... There's it. a reason why they're called flight path houses, yeah? yeah. Like flight path neighbourhoods. For someone that grew up in the southeast, the nearest airport to us was Moorabbin. And every yeah. now and then you get a plane flying to Moorabbin, but it would be like just a, like a private, you know, Cessna or some yeah, shit. Prop. Yeah, like it'd get close to the house. And I remember just sitting in my backyard looking up and like, hey, that's cool. For someone that didn't grow up in those areas, when you go to the southeast, you know, like the lookout? Yeah. Yeah. I went there a couple of times with my bike, like over the last year, random mates. It's fucking surreal. You feel like it's the war of the world. It's like someone's actually coming to land. You, you guys have the same reaction to hook turns in the city? No, I'm good with hook turns. <laughs> and like, stop it. Like, I remember my mate didn't, could, like, he didn't realize that you had to stop next to the tram when it stopped. Oh, I just drove straight yeah. through. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember the tram driver just chasing him down. Like, are you some sort of malaka, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not from around here. Like, you're still a fucking idiot. No, nah, the sign comes out. It says stop. They know, like, the those signs came out like after 2005 or something. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I remember 2003, just like <laughs> everyone sort of knew that you just had to stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those unspoken rules. Yeah. The hook turns in the city don't bother me. My old man forced me to learn how to do a hook turn. Like the first day me and him went out for a drive. I still remember the first time we went for an L plate out drive. We started in Clayton, drove all the way through Yarra Valley, Yarra Glen, like out, like, um, uh, what's that area called? Emerald. Yeah. You know, all those areas. Swung back in, caught the east and all the way back down to the city. And then in the city, he's like, oh, you're going to do a hook turn. I said, nah, I don't want to start. You know, it's too complicated. Like, he goes, nah. He goes, you do one, you'll never not know how to do one. Trust me, it's easy. I'm like, okay. So we did one and that was the end of it, man. I was fine. I was used to like just drift my back wheels as I used to. <laughs> <laughs> did you, so your dad, did your dad teach you how to drive through and through? What do you mean? Like, did he, was, were all your lessons with your dad? Or did no, they actually no, all my lessons. Summer? My first ones were. Yeah. And then after that, it just became... You just had like those three lessons then when and did your test, something like that? No, nah, basically, I did... Because I got my license late. Because yeah. I didn't have money for a car when I was 18. Same thing. I think we got our license at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. But we I all, knew how to drive. We I, always relied on your cousin to come pick us up. <laughs> no, you relied on him. Not me. I lived on the other side. Boy, we would come pick you up from Preston Station. No, no. You didn't do that. Did we? Nah. And I actually said this to... I said it to him a little while ago. I, I, maybe not a while ago. It's probably a year ago now. I remember saying to him, I go, mate, okay, you got to remember something. When we were like 18, I would walk from my mum's house. I would walk to Clayton Station, which was like, you know, two Ks or whatever, maybe a bit less, 10, 15 minute walk. Then walk from, uh, catch a train from Clayton to the city, walk from Flinders to Collins Street, catch the 112 tram yeah. up to Preston, up St. George's Road, peak hour traffic on Saturday. It would take me like an hour. Total transit time, like one hour and 50 minutes or something. Yeah. And this was before we had, like, YouTube on phones. We, we have to call the house, like, Thea. Yeah, did, yeah, yeah. Did, Can you leave a message if so? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then we would tram it from Preston back down St. George's Road to Chapel Street, which I would have passed, like, an hour and two, three hours earlier. And I made this point to him. I said, when did you ever make the same effort to come to my hood to do that shit? Here's the thing. Like, you'd get invited out. Like, hey, man, coming out tonight? Yeah. But yeah, and I remember, like, I meet us in Morabbe, and I'm like, yeah, cool. How the fuck am I, <laughs> how am I going to get there? Or, no, like, no. We're, we're in St. Kilda, meet us. Okay, I'll just ride my fucking push bike, yeah? 
<laughs> I'll, just, I'll just write my push bike. Yeah, but I made that distinct point. Like, I used to come up to Preston every weekend, like, without fail, and it would have made more sense for me just to stop at South Yarra. Yeah. And just wait for you guys to meet me there. I had to do my hair, man. <laughs> you guys would always be traditionally at least two hours late. No. Yeah, oh, no. Nah. I got so used to it. I remember one time, I remember one time, I had enough, and I remember calling Pete or my cousin, one of yours, and said, oh, we'll go to Greco's for coffee. And I said, what time? And they said, oh, seven. I went, yeah. I go, I'll see you at seven. As soon as I hung up, caught up a friend of mine. Yeah, okay, what are you doing? She's like, nothing. Okay, meet me at Greco's for coffee in like half an hour. She's just sure? I go, yeah. Okay. I met her at Greco's. We sat there for an hour and a half having coffee, and then you guys rocked up. And you tried to start chatting. We go, I'm having my coffee right now. I go, I'll be with you in a minute. And I remember I finished up 20 minutes, and then I came and sat down with you. I don't remember anything that I remember being. <laughs> Fuck off! I remember, I remember, I remember being at Crown. I remember being at Crown. I remember it hundred percent. Do you remember Crown? And I think it was your cousin got his phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ripped. Yeah, I, remember, yeah. I remember following the Lebo down the stairs because there used to be the the Galactic Circus. That's where everyone was. Went down the stairs, went outside, and I spoke to the guy. And I'm like, "Hey, man, come on! Well, what the fuck are you doing?" And he's like, "Is he your brother?" I'm like, "Yeah, man, we're, we're mates. Like, wh- why the fuck are you taking the phone?" And he's like, "Fuck you and fuck everyone." And I'm like, "Whoa, man! Like, what?" <laughs> What's your problem, man? He's we like, were still in high school. It was like a 3210. 32? Yeah, 3210 yeah, or 3210, something like that. I remember like him coming back, like some some guy showing up like he wants 150 bucks for it. And we're like, fucking kidding me. Yeah, I just said, pay it and get the fuck out of here. It was like that was like 100 of them. It was like pack mentality downstairs. There was just so fucking Stan, many of them. Do you ever see that, that now? What do you mean, packs? Yeah. Um, yeah, on Sydney Road sometimes. Like that bad? Not that bad that it used to be. Do they intimidate you when you see them? No. Like, no. They, I, I don't. They didn't intimidate. Like, when like when I got a little bit older into high school, I really didn't care about them afterwards. When I started getting, like, small, I was like, oh, whatever. I don't fucking care anymore. Yeah, and no, I, like, I never sort of cared, especially growing up in the Southeast. Like, we all had whoever we had here as well. Yeah. But that's why I try to, like, I don't know if it's because I'm older and just don't care. But when it's probably because you don't see, you don't hang around where they when are. When I go for walks, even down Sydney Road, or like, I mean, I'm in South Bank, you know, so I go to Crown. Mate, they're not shopping at 2 o'clock in no. the afternoon, you know? No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, when I see them now, like, packs are like, you know, 18-year-olds or 17-year-olds coming off with attitudes. I was like, get out of my Dude, way, Dude, they're all, they're all on those electric scooters. That's none, what makes me laugh. None of them can afford cars now because those Japanese cars, the price of them gone through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's driving a Hyundai Getz. No hubcaps. It's all usually silver, no hubcaps. It's like five of them sitting in the fucking car. Or they're all driving their mum's Golf or some shit like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but I see I see a lot of Somalians lately. A lot of Up them. your way? Yeah, like they started transitioning towards... I was going to say, they came from Footscray and the Somalis were in Dandy at one point too. They started like coming down to like Epping side of things and everything, like Epping Reservoir, Tomstown. Really? Yeah. I've, it's lately. I've been out there a bit. I've seen, a, yeah, I guess in, in pockets of it, Laylor as well. Like Craigieburn, that sort of stuff. Yeah. It's cheap housing. Like, it's affordable housing down that end. Guess What's a house in Craigieburn worth? The price has gone through the roof. Like, I don't know what the prices are, but, like, you're looking at, like, maybe eight, 900 For Craigieburn? Yeah. And that's the part I can't wrap my head around. You know, like, growing up in the suburbs, like, 10 k's away from the city. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, well, time for you to buy a house. So, and I see, I, I like, once we all start going back to work more than what we are now instead of working from home... I can't see myself jumping on the train, going for that two hour, two and a half hour train ride to get into the city. And then once you've done your seven hour shift, you know, you're going back. I can't. For a year I worked, I lived four minutes from my work yeah. for a year. Did you and always like, were you late to work? Oh, of course. I know. <laughs> All the boys that I knew that worked close to the restaurant were always fucking late. No. The closer they were, the later they were. Standard. You give yourself eight hours to get ready, and you yeah. won't be ready in time. No. <laughs> we'll get to five to eight. Like a fuck, man. <laughs> like you're running through the door trying to put on your pants. Yeah. Nah. Look, I lived five minutes from work, and it was awesome. I'm not going to lie. Like, that commute was non-existent. You could go home and take a dump if you had to and come back. You know what I mean? Go like, on your, like, you didn't tell anybody where you live, but like, hey, I'll be back going for a walk. <laughs> just go get some fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, so one of the one of the chefs lived across the road from QV, and like mm. I'd just go home, like, "Hey man, can I just go take a shower?" Like, "Yeah, bro, here you go." Or like we'd all go to the pool, like during the break, <laughs> <laughs> go use the pool at QV. Like, um. <laughs> restaurants closed. 
that the whole thing, like you're saying, like the commute, like the Craigie burn from the CBD. What was it? Like an hour? Yeah, the, like forty five. Look in peak hour traffic. Oh, it's peak hour is another ball game. It's like another tour. So from my house, um, one of my friends lives in Cremant, and I, it's like a forty minute drive if it's like after four o'clock. Now imagine like that forty minute drive, and then going into the city. Add twenty minutes of traffic on top. Traffic on top, and then your petrol price and the time that you spent. And like, what about if you go into the city? Depending on parking, or if you're going to park your car before the city, then jump on the train. Then there's another train ticket. That really hurts. The idea that you have to park your car suburbs away from your job to get on a cheaper form of transport to save on parking. Yeah. And then you think about the CEOs and like upper middle management cunts that have got cards to like private garages in the CBD. Yeah. Parking their Lexus in there without even thinking about it, like whatever. And then you get back to your car that's at the station, and somebody's just fucking. <laughs> Someone's in with the sofa. <laughs> Someone's keyed the fuck out yeah, of it. You're, just, <laughs> well, you're rocking up, and then literally you caught them like a like a squirrel. You know, I, like, what the fuck? I, when I had my Skyline, someone stole the gear shift, the whole fucking gear shifter. They they broke, broke the whole stick. They broke into the car, took the stick, and that was it. And I was like. <laughs> I was like, where the fuck? And, they and took then the-, the next week, your center console's gone. Like, uh, they, the- they, they took the stereo head as well. And I was like, was that the only thing they could detach? <laughs> and I was like, fuck sake. And I remember buying those parts back off eBay. Just like- Probably re- from the same guy. I remember like driving around with like a, with a wrench as a, as a stick. <laughs> Got my dad to like tie yeah. it up. Because- oh, man, I saw that so many times in Clayton. <laughs> a wrench for a gear shifter or a screwdriver for a star- uh, key? Fuck. Oh, dad. I- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this will fix it. Don't worry. Man, you go to the wreckers in Clayton and you look, you're walking along the shelves of the parts. There were so many cars with screwdrivers for ignition yeah. uh, in the ignition barrel. My, I, my brother had a VK Commodore and I remember the barrel just wore, wore, wore out completely. And I remember like I was wearing my cross when I was young. I go, if I can start this car with my cross, give, give me a hundred bucks. He goes, yeah, I'd like to see you try. Just fucking put my necklace down. Like, turned it. Yeah, turned it right over. The cross. You did not even need a key. You could just turn the barrel on its own. It was that worn out. VK. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, what year was a VK? Uh, 87. I was going to say, we were in 88, 89. Do you know how much a VK is worth now? I don't even go there, man. I we were talking about the other day. Do you know how much R31s are going for? Yeah, like 40 grand, something like it that. Depends. 45? The, the, it depends what models, man. Was it you that sent me the picture the other day? The VL? That's $114,000? No, I think you, someone sent me the V... No, someone sent me the R31. Was it you? I was talking about it with the boys last it night. It was me. It must have been me. Yeah, you sent me and you said, it's a GT, GTR. And I said, do I know R31 GTRs? Like, there were, there were GTSs, but that's not a GTS. It's a Silhouette S3. Just painted there's, red. There's too many um, instances where... So, I've seen my old Skyline jump up on Facebook Marketplace about twice this year. Yeah. The first price that it was at. So, I sold it at seven grand. Which Skyline was it? It was R33. Okay. So, I sold it for seven and a half because that was the price back like 10 years ago. Yeah. Saw it again uh, at the beginning of this year for 14. And the guy that bought it was trying to sell it for 28. 28? Yeah. So, jacked another fucking 14 grand onto it. Why? For an R33? No, it wasn't even turbo. It wasn't anything. So, on the Facebook marketplace, I've... I smashed that car a couple of times when I had it and I got it repaired professionally because someone knocked, knocked into me and they fucked it up. And on the Facebook marketplace, they're like, uh, second owner, baby this thing all its life. Blah, blah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, he's got the number plates on there. And I'm like, hey, mate, this was my car. I am the original second owner. Here is when I got T-boned at, on Sydney Road. Here's when I got T-boned on Pascoval Road. Here's when like a golf hit me in the corner of this, this and this. Do not buy this car. And, like, they've, I've got them banned from half of those. Because it's just, like, they're giving false information. I'm like, here's the real information of this. And they're like, how do we know it's you? I'm like, look in the boot. My dad sprayed the boot silver. Why? Like, okay, Dad, there's rust in the boot next to the battery tray. Yeah, I'll fix it. Don't worry. Anyway, spray he, painted. He went to Super Cheap Auto, bought some, like, so, I don't know, some spray. I get there the next day. Check it out. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> the boot, the bait. The, That's like people that just paint over mold in houses. Man. Yeah, he did exactly that. It doesn't that. work, dude. You can't just paint he, over he, mold. He did it well. Like, so he cleaned it, all that sort of stuff, got rid of it. And then he's like, yeah, that'll do it. And I'm like, cool, cool. Thanks, dad. Another but, like, wog job. Seeing people trying to like, like the, fa- the, 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 what do you call it? Their profiles. They're like 20 year old kids, like yeah. trying to sell 70 grand cars. Like, no, not, not going to happen, man. You're an entrepreneur. You're only an entrepreneur if you've got an OnlyFans page, man. Ah, uh, I wish I had one. <laughs> Have you seen the coins some of these fucking people make? 
I don't understand who's paying for porn. A lot of people. No, but I, I, I honestly don't understand who's paying for porn, man. Like, to the to that degree where these people are making thousands, hundreds and thousands of dollars. Well, it is only fans. Like, people have fetishes with these people. No, but it's not even a fetish. Do you reckon, like, like, I reckon I could take photos of my feet and have an OnlyFans account and, like, we'll make money. My feet are brutal, so I wouldn't <laughs> take photos of them. <laughs> Years of working as a labourer, like, yeah, nah. Pe- like, people like, get off on that shit, right? Well, I, I, I tweeted about it, like, two, three years ago. I said, that's it. I'm going to just start an OnlyFans, take photos of my feet, and be done with it. I reckon I'll just start taking photos of my missus' feet. I'm going to pretend I'm her on the OnlyFans account. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be like Eddie Murphy, like, rolling back the sheets, the taking photos part, of it. The funniest part is you're seeing a pair of, like, dainty feminine feet, yeah. but then having your face as the profile. It's like the Seinfeld episode, which is, come man hands. <laughs> <laughs> the hands of a man. And it cuts the lobster like the with the creature had a Greek mythology. <laughs> Cuts that giant lobster. My like, favourite is just, well, at least finish your beer. <laughs> he opens it. He's just like, there's a twist off. <laughs> oh, shit. That's good. That's good. We're going to take, like, what if you pretend, what if you just catfish someone, start stealing other people's photos, okay, think of it like this. create your own account? We know that people's feet are a fetish, yeah. right? And we know that you can make revenue on the internet selling pictures of feet. Yeah. Would your missus care? If you sold pictures of her feet. Fucking A, she would. She'd get so upset with me. Why? I don't know. She would give If someone said to me, let me take pictures of your hands and uh, I'm going to, I'll give you 20% of whatever I make. Well, kick over it. Look, I'm just saying, because anything I do, I know I'll just get into trouble. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but feet aren't. Like, like. Yeah, but your feet aren't a sensitive, uh, like aren't a private thing. You know, it's like I'm asking to take pictures of your ass crack. I'm saying it's it's pictures of your feet. Anything I do, she's going to get upset. That's what (laughs) you need to, you need if it involves her in any fucking way, she's going to get upset and I'm going to hear about it. And then, and then I'm going to have to go. Anything. And then I'm going to have to drive to Macca's and get like a chocolate sundae and be like, sorry, babe. I actually feel like a chocolate sundae. I bought a chocolate sundae from, um, oh my God. Do you know what they cost? From the Mr. Whippy Vans? It's not a 30 cent cone, is it? No. Dude, Mr. Whippy Vans in Campbellfield. Yeah. There's one guy that goes around, cash only, of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I bought a Sunday for myself and I bought a double a double uh, chocolate with like f- nuts or chocolate or whatever. I don't know. Just a double cone. Yeah. Yeah. And it costs like $12.50. Is it still the kid holding the giant ice cream that's bigger than his Yeah, the Whippy, Mr. Whippy Boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, 12 bucks like 50 for a, a Sunday in a cup. And a cone. You know what would look good in here? Right. Like just a Mr. Whippy Van Door. <laughs> <laughs> the door. Just to have the door. Like, yeah, come in. And like, you just open it you up. You reckon there'll be one of the wreckers? Yeah. There, there'll be some sort of, like, there, a couple of times I've driven in the suburbs and you see Mr. Whippy Van just sitting there deteriorating. That door would just look really good at something. You like, literally just pull oh, it off like dandelion spores. Yeah. It comes just right off. Donk. The you're, fridge is still in there. Where do you see, like, Vans Park? There's a couple of... So, I've seen down Moreland Road. Um, I don't know if he's still there, but there was a Mr. Weepy van that's been sitting outside the front of someone's yard for years. Do you reckon there's money in those vans? Because, I mean, I just paid 12 bucks for, like, probably, a Sunday. Nah, you probably need to have, like, your working with children's check and all that sort of shit. You're to telling me up. these old wogs that can't speak English smoking over the counter have got children's checks? Yeah. No like, that, chance. If they got pulled over or Who something. Who the like, fuck would pull them over? They would. They'd nah. get inspected. The health inspector, like, they'd have to be checked. Health checking. inspector? Yeah. These vans look like termites literally holding hands, man. I guarantee you there's a van somewhere that still has fucking ice cream in there from, like, 2001. <laughs> I've actually pulled it. I actually- <laughs> 2001. I, I actually ripped out a, a, a tub of ice cream out of a fridge that said, like, 1998. When, when In 2007. <laughs> You and know, I was where like, were you? at that place with the, the you know. Oh, the main one? Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> and one. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> was it a Napolitano ice cream? No, it was just vanilla. Dude, I actually, can you even buy Napolitano ice cream from Woolies? If you can find a no frills, like, shop, you find one. What, no frills? No, like, just Woolies. Yeah, Woolies you can. Be- they still have a Napolitano. Do you remember the, so, with me and Napolitano, I remember my mum getting the no frills tub, that pure white yeah. one. And just like always, the chocolate just being empty. <laughs> Why'd you get the three colours? Who the fuck wants this? <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> the Simpsons man. Doesn't he have like He's three, got, like four tubs of fucking ice cream. <laughs> Merge, we had a chocolate strawberry vanilla ice cream. <laughs> mm, chocolate. <laughs> Dude, I like I, I'm harassing the fuck out of you with just random like Simpsons like <laughs> videos. 
And the one where Homer's like, don't I get some kind of award and ceremony? And like, Mr. Burns looks at the lawyer and he's like, it just gives him that nod. And just like, that whole clip is a laugh a minute. It's a laugh every 15 seconds. And then Barney gets like Joe Fraser. Gets- so when Barney and like Joe Fraser walk outside and they start the fight, the doors open and you see blood splat onto the door <laughs> and then close and there's blood like just dripping down it. And I was like, that's, that's, that is what the Simpsons are right there. We were there. talking about it last night. We are just talking, I can't remember what, oh, what joke was it? We went through some episode. I, I can't remember because I haven't edited it yet. But we, oh, was it, it was a, wasn't a Conan and Brian episode. It was, we're talking about the writing behind the Simpsons and how funny it would have been sitting there just coming up with these stupid things. Yeah. And how much, how fun it would have been to be part of that team. You know what I mean? Like being part of the original Simpsons crew writing these original episodes and just dying, dying yourself laughing, man. Like that Joe Frazier bit, you know, yeah. the whole blue head lawyer bit, any of these things. Just Joe Frazier talking to Homer about a couch. You lost the couch. I lost the championship. <laughs> 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 and it's just, it's magic. It's just absolute magic. I think about, someone asked me the other day, like, what would you do? What kind of job could you have, like, to be happy? Like, what would make you, you know, like, fulfilled sort of thing? And I said, I don't know. Like, to get up and do something every day. Get paid, like, 250000 Is episode. that ultimately what the answer is? Just money? Or is it enough? Like, you know when you hear about, like, these CEOs and, like, actors walking away from yeah. projects and it's like, I'm burnt out. I don't find the love in it anymore. I need to do something different. They're getting paid billions, like, to do whatever they're doing. Do you reckon I- it comes down to money? <sighs> it- well, I don't know. I reckon they've been in a position to, you know, three million bucks to them is nothing now at that stage when once they start earning that sort of coin. Yeah. Uh, you know, like reading up before Nicolas Cage, when he, like in his prime, turned down the Matrix and Lord of the fucking Rings. Now, like I know Nicolas Cage like dropped off the face of the earth after Nicolas the Ghost. Cage is the biggest champion of all time. Yeah, but he dropped off after Ghost Nicolas Rider. Nicolas Cage, and I'll repeat it, is the biggest champion of all time. Yeah. So after Ghost Rider, he sort of dropped off a little bit after yeah. that, All right. So, but if he stayed, his peak years were the mid nineties. Yes. The but 2000s. if he stayed in the Matrix and Lord of the Rings, do you reckon he would be more prolific than what he is now? He is a champion, but like right now, do you reckon he'd be more popular? Have you seen his last movies? <laughs> There's that new one where, like, the the weight of being... He plays himself. Yeah. yeah. No, I haven't seen that yet, but um, th- I, there was a bunch of them on Netflix. I went through a period in t- about 10 years ago when I first moved into Noble. I was watching Nicolas Cage movies every week. Like, I went through this whole stage of just downloading them. Man, if I watched 10 Nicolas Cage movies, maybe one was like, eh, you know. The rest of them, yeah. he was in peak form. Peak form. Have you seen the interview when, he's, uh, when he shows up and he's just high off coke and his eyes are just like... Oh, is he wearing that black leather jacket? He's yeah, got long and hair? he's doing he's doing, he's doing like, karate kicks. Yeah, and shit. And like <laughs> his eyes, <are> so, <laughs> his eyes are so fucking wide open. They're just like he's like yeah. <laughs> I'm um, like, who the fuck is this guy? Who, who's he going to be cast as? Uh, Neo? Um, I think so. I'm not sure. It was I think Will Smith had the chance to be Neo or Morpheus, but also Will Smith had the chance to be Django. Yeah, but he said it was too violent. It was too violent for him, was it? <laughs> He, it didn't... <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> Will Smith's a knob, whether you like it. I don't care. He's always been a knob. He's always been a clown. He's always been just this cheesy character. He, his son, I fucking hate his son. And I've, I hate his son because I've had a run-in with his son. What do you mean you had a run-in with him? So I was walking the floor... <laughs> What is it with everyone on this podcast <laughs> comes in and they've had some running with some <laughs> random celebrity? So um, oh, this would be good. All right, so I was working. I was working. <laughs> Jaden Smith. <laughs> so we're working. I was working at the. Dude, por- <laughs> you know it's funny. He's literally the opposite of you in every single way. He's yeah. this skinny, effeminate black kid yeah. who wears dresses, and I'm just picturing you staring at him, sweat from work. You know what I mean? It's like- <laughs> so, like, we're pretty much, I was working a tent at the Formula One. Okay. What were you doing? Working a, working a tent. So, pretty much just managing a tent. So, we had about, like, maybe 25, 30 chefs on board. Oh, okay. So, so tent, when you say tent, you mean a chef. Yeah. Like- so, it was, it would have been, like, a VIP tent. Yeah. You know, like, you pay Bird maybe- cage, all that sort of crap. You, you, were, you pay, like, maybe, like, two, three grand, and you've got, unlimited like- Unlimited drinks. Unlimited everything. Unlimited yeah. food, uh, desserts, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, you got all that sort of stuff. I remember there being a Rolex, like, a Rolex watch in the corner, like, this giant Rolex. Oh, the big one in the yeah. display case. Yeah. I remember, like- my mate Adam, like, you know how much that thing's worth? I'm like, <laughs> well, he's like, it's over 100K. And I'm like, 
god damn and I like turns up just, on eBay, and I just see two like Jimmy, <laughs> two, two, two casual workers putting up like two two casual Indians like with a UV vest picking it up and walking away with it. I'm like, I don't know if they're actually taking it away to pack it away or they're doing a runner with it. But besides that, so I remember like um, someone's like, "Yo, Jaden Smith is coming to the tent. He wants uh, sushi." I'm like, "Yeah, no, worries. I'll just pull out the sushi out of my fucking ass." <laughs> like, you need to find sushi. I'm like, oh, fuck's sake, and they're like. Lewis Hamilton wants something vegan as well. And I'm like, I'm looking at everyone. I'm like, they're not going to fucking eat it. They're not going to eat anything. You guys need to know this. Well, I don't care. They need it. Okay, cool. I'll do it. So I run around trying to find some sushi. We end up emptying someone's like f- freezer. <laughs> we find everything that we can, vegan, this sort of stuff. <laughs> and we get it all prepared. He walks in, brandishes a bottle of his water. Yeah. Sits down for like maybe 30 seconds. Gets up really quickly and just runs out the door. And I was like, okay, is he coming back? And they're like, no, nah, I think he's done. I'm like, okay. And then I bump into him outside. And I'm like, hey, man, do you like the sushi? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. It was great. I'm like, he's like, you want a photo? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much what was happening, like, he sat down. Someone told him, like, uh, Lewis Hamilton's outside. He wants to speak to him. So he got up really quickly and bounced. So we got food sitting there for Lewis and, like, this kid. And no one cared. So, like, all the chefs ended up eating the sushi. I have a real problem with that. The waste of food? Yeah. Yeah. And the esteemed idea that Jaden Smith, of all people, is, like, a somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah. And with the Karate Kid. And then that other movie with his father. Well, the company I worked for, they're like, he's coming, you got to make it look good. And I was like, man, I'd rather make everybody else look good instead of this kid. Isn't That's what like- I mean. Like, the esteemed idea... They're like, look, I get what celebrity worship is, all right? I get it. I haven't been in front of too many celebrities that I've met that have been gaga, like, over it. A few of them have, like, left me a bit speechless, like, a bit like, oh, my God, like, you know. It's, who, it's, who have you seen? No one you would know. As in, like, up close? Yeah. Like, as in met. Who were you like, holy shit? Music, mostly musicians that you've never met. You wouldn't have no idea about. Who? Who? Oh, who? Like, guitarists, man. Like, okay. You know what I mean? Like, niche guitarists that probably have got, like, five million followers on Insta, but yeah. you would never know. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's not another scooter, is it? <laughs> <laughs> nah, stuffy salty. I went to his play. I went to his theater show when I was a kid. Was he, was he good? Nah, I was a kid. I didn't I re- really understand. I remember, like it. someone, like he showed up to the airport for people who know who stuffy salty is. It was like one of the, the Greek most famous of, Greek uh, yeah, comedians and all yeah. that sort of stuff. So I remember went to the airport. Some kid runs up. Can I get your autograph? And he just says to him in Greek, "Fuck off." Are you serious? Yeah. Just says to him, fuck off. With a ciggy in his mouth, fuck off. <laughs> he was a ghoul of a looking looking dude, and he had the hottest women, like, on the planet. Yeah, his last wife, like, he passed away, I think, 2000, That's some recently. it been maybe four years, five yeah, years? Yeah, his wife was like, you know, she, look, yeah, she looked good. Yeah. Like, for him. And considering he was... Considering he was, like, Hugh Hefner, like, wasting away. No, nah, he was gremlin-like. Even Hugh Hefner was a good-looking man. Nah, he he just looked like a Greek with, like, he looked like Gargamel from the Smurfs towards the end. He did. Yeah. That is actually a very good comparison. Gargamel yeah. was probably the best comparison. Gargamel, Gargamel with hair. He always had that nose that you could ski, ski Gargamel off. with hair and, um, yeah, like a chain-smoking Gargamel. Yeah. That's probably <laughs> the best way to describe him. What, what airport did you see him? It was a Melbourne. He came to Australia. Yeah, he did. I, like yeah. I, I said, I saw him when yeah. he came. People waited for him and everything. He told the kid to fuck off. Yeah, yeah, fuck off. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> just, just giggling about it. Like, I like the idea that you told Jada Smith that you didn't want his... Uh, I've also had George Columbaris, like, oh, do you want... Like, he had some Saint... I don't know, some place in Q. He's like, you want to buy one of my books or sign it? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> See, would you consider Columbaris a celebrity? A minor no. celebrity? No. I wouldn't. No. Not for a fucking minute. He's like, just buy my book. I'm like, I don't want to. And I said, George, just leave me alone. George. You actually called him George. Because yeah, we're sitting at the bar, and I'm like, George, just leave me alone. I just want to eat. Like, I was, I did Where not, were you? Um, I think he had a place called St. Helena, and it was in Kew. I remember that. It was one of his old restaurants. Um, one of the first ones that he had, and it just shut down. Of course it did. What's he doing now, anyway? Uh, Instagram. He's going to make a comeback soon. He'll do, he'll do another cookbook. He'll do a couple of radio interviews. He'll try and champion, like, what he did wrong and all that sort of shit. He didn't pay people. Yeah, he'll be like, you know, I've learned my lesson, and now we're going to go forward. And I, I guarantee he's going to. They've they're going to try bring him back. I never, I, man. I don't think I've ever been at any of his restaurants except for what's in Jimmy Grant's. 
Jimmy Grant's, we spoke about this last time, yeah. didn't we? It was named after all the boats, and my mum was like, I think it was. It was named place. after all the nameless dudes down yeah. at, the, at the docks. Yeah. Yeah. The, Jimmy Grant's was not good, and it was overpriced. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I mean. Well, I never had anything at his restaurants. People said, people would, I remember one person I knew went to, uh, was it Hellenic Republic? Yeah. And they sent me photos of the meals. And I'm like, man, this looks like the shit I could make at home. Yeah, you can. You're, you're paying it an arm and leg for it. Like, it's not even like good Greek cuisine. It's just the standard. Like, yeah. whatever. I don't know. Like, he's got skills. Can't can't say that he doesn't. But, like, after a while, if you don't pay your staff, man. Come on. Like, everyone needs to live. Do you watch the Master Chefs and all that? No. You don't? Like, I can't stand it. Yeah. I, 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 I see people that I know on there, and I'm like, good. And, like, and I'm, I'm, Happy for him. Like, I know one guy that I used to work with. He ended up going on MasterChef. Yeah, I think you told me about this guy. This is another one. Like, oh. I just recently saw him and, like, he jumped on it and it launched his career. And I'm like, great. Like, this guy, this, yeah, this is, yeah. launches their career and stuff. But there's also that little piece of me where it says, fuck you. Like, I'm happy for these people, but there's also that little piece inside of me that says, go fuck yourself. It, it is probably jealousy. It probably is, like, because I've, like, worked in there for so long. And, like, people just get handed these things sometimes. Yeah, but you know what? That's like with me with media. You know what I mean? I've hustled and grinded, like, my whole life to get something happening with media. And, like, if you've had a partner and then they take all the fucking praise and you're like, what the fuck? What about me? It's something like that. But, you know, but then, like, you see kids go viral over absolutely nothing. The dance. Yeah, doing some stupid TikTok dance and all of a sudden they're they're on Ellen getting paid 100K. TikTok for Ukraine? Did you say that? (laughs) No. I TikTok said, for Ukraine? Yeah. There was like, was learn these TikTok dances for Ukraine or some shit. Oh, like oh I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Dance for, like, how the fuck does that help them? They're getting shelled, oh. motherfuckers. I'd love to go on Ellen and dance for 100K. Dance in your underwear for 100K, I'd man. do it. I'd fucking do it. If anyone yeah. wants to sponsor me hasn't for 100K. Ellen, <laughs> hasn't Ellen shut down? Um, didn't Isn't she, show what did she do again? She did something bad. She, oh, she was just, uh, they came out that she was a toxic, uh, toxic, toxic person. workplace. Yeah. Something like that. She come and work with me for a couple of hours, man. <laughs> toxic, you want toxic workplace. I reckon some of these people get paid so much though. As in what? The celebs? Like the people that work around her and all that sort of stuff. Oh, like, the, the hangers on. That's why they're there being bootlicks, man. She's got the, she's got the DJ on there that was in like just dance or some shit. He was in one fucking movie. Uh, what were those like shitty dance movies back in the early Step 2000s? Up? Is it Step Up? It was no, Step no. Up. Uh, no, maybe it was. Hang on, it was like a Step dance Up. Off. One, two, three, four, all that sort of shit. No, Step. Hang on. So it was Save the Last Dance. Dance movie. It is Step Up with Channing. Channing Tatum. Hang on, Center Stage, Save the Last Dance, Stomp the Yard, Honey, Step Up. Step Up. It is that's Step Up. One. And you got served. Yeah, you got served. Had Chris Brown. He gets fucking shot in the first thirty seconds. I don't remember. I never saw it. Dude, every time I went, when I was younger, and you, like, how about you ask a girl, do you want to go watch a movie? Yeah, there's a new movie, Step Up or something, let's go. I'm like, yeah, okay, Save the Last movies. Dance or some shit like that. I remember just falling asleep in the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, my snore, I, I, I was going to say, I snore I'm so picturing the key, <laughs> crescendo of the scene, it's like, I love you too, babe. <laughs> and then, like, you this, oh, and then just this, <laughs> <laughs> I'd always wear like uh, like we used to have like those really puffy jackets yeah, back in the, the day. H uh, uh, what were they called? The Helly Hansons or whatever. There was Helly Hanson and like Tommy, I had like yeah. a Tommy Hilfiger. I had a Tommy Hilfiger, and it was too. really nice and like it, yeah. it would hug you. Goose back. down Parker, <laughs> and you'd sit in the cinema seat, and then halfway into it, you'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> and I would choke. I'd be like, because <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I would fucking just. <laughs> the gentleman with the deviated septum, please sit down. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I remember like watching, what was I watching? There was one where they did the piss take out of like, um, there was that football movie with the Dawson's Creek guy. James Van Der Beek. They did Varsity Blues. Varsity Blues. So there was a piss take of Varsity Blues. Uh, I, don't I remember know. this chick's like, oh, you want to go watch this? I'm like, yeah, cool. <laughs> and the guy from, well, Captain America was on it. Like, I don't know. Chris Evans. Chris Evans was the main character in it. And I remember falling asleep in the cinema and waking up and just being there on my own. <laughs> On your own? Yeah. I remember just waking Even up. Even the bird left? Yeah. I was like, oh, well, I didn't pay for that ticket. Even the bird left? Yeah. I was in hysterics. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you leave it after that? Like the guy, you know the guy who cleans up the fucking aisles? <laughs> just hit your foot. <laughs> Sorry, mate. He's like, buddy, 
You're funny. I'm like, what? he's like, movie's over. You work, up, like, you work like I can hold Greek, man. <laughs> and I remember this was probably like when I was working, I must have been working like like an yeah. animal and just trying to fit in like some sort of time of normality. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, babe, let's, let's go to a darkened <laughs> theatre with climate control. Let's go. And, and comfortable and, seats. And I was like, I remember waking up, I'm like, well, at least I don't have to pay for dinner or some shit after. I, I was going to say, can you... At our age now, do you have the tolerance to sit through a shit movie? Um, I watched the shit movie yesterday, Uncharted. Oh, and did you play the game? Yeah, the game was amazing. I never played the game, so the, I'm got no interest. The in games the movie. were great. Everyone keeps trying to get me to play Elden Ring, but I reckon I'll just break the fucking controller. Yeah, I was going to say Uncharted. <laughs> everyone what's, says that I should play it. I've just never played. What's it. a shit movie? Anything on Netflix? Um, I give it. Maybe 15 minutes, and if I'm not interested, I just turn it off. I'll give it 10, 15 minutes. But then eventually it comes back to me because it says movies that you still yeah, need started to finish, or whatever. And I'll put it on in the background. Man, and I'm like, that was shit. I start these movies. I'm like, this is terrible. I could act better. I could write a better script. I could direct better. I could be the better cinematographer. This makes no sense. Well, so I watched Uncharted because I love the game. And, like, I, I do recommend playing uh, the last one. Like, it's just like watching Indiana Jones. Yeah, but don't you need to play the first ones? No, fuck the first one. Just play the last one. You'll get the gist of it. <laughs> You'll understand it. Cause they, they watch Malak in a bar last night. <laughs> the sound was enough. They didn't get the gist of it. It's a really good, it's a good game. I, I, I love it. Like, <laughs> combing his hair with a fork. <laughs> oh, fuck. Sorry, I've quoted that line a hundred times in this, uh, in this thing. And, man. like, there's, um, you played The Last of Us? No. Are you ever going to play it? She's a lesbian, I know. And it's not about her being a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> like, what else have you got to say about who's, it? Who, who's the actress that she compares to? Um, uh, uh, she's a he now. Emma Page? Yeah, Elliot Page. Elliot Page. It was it Ella, Ella, Ella Page? What was it? No, it was... Um, it was if, what, was, what was her name before no. her transition... <laughs> You're being very careful right now. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, okay. The tr- she, he's now Elliot Page. Okay. I right? S- no, isn't he? I saw a top... Like- yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. He's uh, Elliot Page now. He was Ellen Page. And the Last of Us character's name is Ellie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so she was modelled off. And, yeah, she was offended by Ellie because they used her likeness without asking. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Oh, no, no. She was offended because the original drawing of Ellie looked sort of like her, and they said it was a coincidence. They remade her to look more like Ashley Johnson. Who the fuck is Ashley Johnson? I got no idea. Ashley Johnson? I don't know. Kareem. It wasn't appreciated, she says. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? <laughs> that was that was that used to be my excuse for fucking everything. Who the Kareem, fuck did this? Like Kareem like, Abdul Jabbar. <laughs> <laughs> Why, man? Actually, I'm gonna get you one. I'm gonna get you one guy. So, have you seen you've seen the South Park episode? Which one? Where the uh, they do the, the trans athletes? You've oh, with seen. Macho Man. You've done. You've seen it, right? <laughs> with Macho Man. <laughs> yeah, you've, yeah, yeah. You seen it? Oh, I, I, th- I don't remember it. Do but you I think have that, seen is that, that a, is that a really good voice comparison to my Macho? Do you reckon it's 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 a yeah? They're doing their best Macho Man like impression. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who actually did it though. Out of like either of the guys, they must have found someone. In there is a guy. There's um the guy the comedian um uh Dan um. Soda, soda, or whatever he does. Haven't you, have, have you ever seen that clip? I probably, I've probably seen him, but don't. okay. He does the best Macho Man, hands down. I've played it on this podcast before. Like he's hands down the best Macho Man impressionist on on the planet because okay. he embodies like the whole everything. It's not just like okay. It's not with impressions. It's not just about doing the impression and trying to copy the voice. You got to copy the inflections. You got to be able to write. You got to be able to write script and joke that actually suits the character. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not enough to just get the voice down. You could get the voice down and do maybe a couple of the famous lines. Speaking of voices, they replaced Lenny. Oh, yeah, now. They've done, I, they've, I had no idea till I, till I heard it from you. Oh. You brought it up on a podcast. And, and I was like, he's lying. And I was like, he's not. And I it's, looked it up and I was like, no. Alex Des, uh, Desiree, whatever from his name is. That, from Becca. Yeah, Becca. That's yeah, the, the blind guy from Becca. 
I was like, no, nah, this can't be real. Like, it's, eventually they're going to probably replace every character. They have. There. They've already started. They've already started replacing everyone. My big question is they're going to replace Hibbert. Hibbert was, is voiced by Harry Shearer, who's a, <sighs> a white guy. No. But what's the point? You're at that point now. Just can the show. Yeah, finish it. Do a special here and there, and that's it. But like it if, makes no sense. This is a, who does Marge again? Uh, she's the only one who uh, I've never actually... Uh, Rem- she's not worth remembering. It's only one woman, and she only does Marge's voice and her sister's. Like, isn't her voice just, like, destroyed now? Doing, yeah. Trying to do Marge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these years. Like, that's why she'd stopped doing the grandmother. Like, so they Marge's, killed off the grandma. Yeah, well, I don't, don't remember when they killed her off. Krabappel's dead. Yeah, they've just replaced her. Oh, they have? I was talking about this last night. Um, they're bringing in a... Oh, maybe I'll let you, let you have a look at it. I'll take a look, but apparently, like, the new season... If you listen the- to last night's episode, once it's edited, you'll see. Okay, I'll go through that one. Yeah, that's very quick. But, yeah, they're replacing her. I think that kind of shit... It, I've, I've mentioned this before. It falls into the whole category of we're acting. Yeah. Why can't you play another actor of another descent or ethnicity or whatever? That's the whole point of acting. <laughs> Eddie Murphy coming to America, he plays a hundred characters. One of them is an old white Jewish dude. Did you ever go to the building when you were in America? Did you ever go to that area? Queens? Yeah. Uh, I went to Queens, but I didn't go to... Um, well, we went to the barber shop. I went to Astoria. <laughs> we went, so you went to see the Goonies? No, I went to <laughs> Stamatis Tavern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went there too. <laughs> yeah, Stamatis Tavern was the best. It was actually sick. We, I went, so we went to Queens and we saw where they filmed it and it's just like being painted over just where Mighty Sharp used to Father be. Oh, the mural? Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing there now. It's just like, it's just gentrified. Is the, sh- the actual shop front there though? The shop front's not there anymore. It's just bricked. It's bricked? So the, the, the stairs where he comes out and he's like- The sick. building that he would come yeah, in. Yeah, so that's just- I paint- have a date with Lisa. It's just painted red. And everything else just looks gentrified. Just everything's been taken away. Nothing's there anymore. Really? Yeah. What about the, the actual um, McDowell's? McDowell's? <laughs> Is that a McDonald's? I think it was a McDonald's. I'm not too sure. I thought it was a McDonald's that got t- like it was closed up, so yeah. they just repurposed it for the movie. Most likely. Something like that. Would have been. How did you... Um, you've seen Problem... So, speaking of actors... Gilbert Godfrey. Did you, want, did you like Problem Child? One, two, and three. One and two were brilliant. Yeah, three was terrible. Uh, it was shit. They tried to, they had Gilbert Coffey, who was a dentist in that, I think. In number three? Yeah. So you changed, <laughs> every fucking you changed every, your profession. Went from a dentist to like a I child. hate them. <laughs> They're stupid, stinking kids. I hate them. I like when he gives him like the whole- Send like, a little sweetheart in. <laughs> he puts him like to grade six. I only have to deal with you for you a year. You are a genius, kid. <laughs> yeah. He was also in Ford Fairlane. Dude, I posted that as a tribute as soon as he passed away. <laughs> Because he's losing it. He's Johnny Crunch, the DJ. Yeah. Because your mothers are pathetic sluts who have sex with midgets. <laughs> <laughs> he's just embodied every character, like just the yelling guy. <laughs> Even the parrot in Aladdin. Come on. Lago. Perfect. The thing with Gilbert Coffrey is what they always say about him is that he was unapo- unapologetically himself. Yeah. And he was raw and out there. It was like a comedian's comedian, like roaster, like just on top of it, like Norm Macdonald. Yeah, Norm Macdonald was so self-aware that it just went over the audience's head, where he was just doing jokes to make himself laugh. He didn't yeah. care if the audience laughed or not. And when they didn't laugh, he even just leaned in on it even more and made it more awkward because he got the last laugh out of it at the end. That's what makes a good comedian, a good performer, like just rising above it and not giving a fuck what anyone else has to say. There's nothing good out there anymore, like actors' movies, like anything like that. Look, we can come off as like old men yelling at clouds, right? Like, because we, we, every podcast, we, anyone I ever have in here, we always go back to the same thing of it was better in the old days. There's nothing of substance. Not, la, la, la. not saying it's, it was better in the old days. There was good quality back then, but no one's actually putting that extra effort into it's the things that are coming out now. I bring it down to the one thing, man. There's a, th- a million production houses now. You know, there's a million, like Amazon's a production house. G- Google's a production house. Yeah, like everyone has a production house where back in the day, you had Orion, you had Paramount, you had Warner Brothers, you had... Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. yeah these <laughs> big fat Jewish dudes. I'd like to thank Harvey Weinstein, you're a magician. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I mean. Like, it took money and effort to make these pictures. Like, an actor... Like, think about Eddie Murphy, yeah? He was the most bankable actor in the late 80s, early 90s, right? Until he had his little drop, right? Coming to America is considered a flop when it came out, but it's a cult classic movie. Yeah. Everyone loves it, right? But he did like 
Coming to America, he did Boomerang, and then he had like a bunch of other movies. But he wasn't releasing a movie every eight, every seven to eight months. He was releasing a movie one to two years. You know who I'm getting sick of? No. Of you. The Rock. Dwayne, ah. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Dude. He said he's going to do Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> I'm going to lose my fucking mind. I'm going to absolutely lose Who's it. he going to be in that? He's going to be... um. Who was the character? You know, you, Kurt, Ru- uh, Kurt Russell's character. What was his name? Jack Burden. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, my friend Jack Burden always says, like, what? I don't know. Um, <laughs> is it going to be him? He, apparently, yeah. Uh, and they're like, we're going to, uh, dude, all he needs is Kevin Hart to show up, play some Asian guy. What's your, <laughs> what's your, do you know what my favorite line from Big Trouble is? It's just, all right, people just sit tight, keep the home fires burning. And if we're not back by dawn, call it president. <laughs> Ah <laughs> oh, man, I reckon they could just read like they could just get him Kurt Russell back in there, like old man sort of a thing. They could do it. that. That plot, that plot line was all over the joint, but they went off hard. Like what when they go through the sewer in New York City? And yeah, yeah, exactly. Just full of fucking monsters. There's monsters, yeah. and then like it's like what the hell's going on? They're, like zombified demons slash I got no idea. Low Pan's going off his rocker. Low Pan wants to be like. A, a, a real person, and then he dies anyway. Like, yeah, that, it, it's that 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 script went south like hard. Yeah, but it's it is what it is. You know what I mean? It was a low fi like <laughs> sci fi martial arts. Look, you got Kurt Douglas, like Kurt Russell playing like a. It's not even a martial artist. It's just a all American badass. Have you thought about doing like YouTube videos in here? Not in here, but maybe you thought about doing YouTube videos something like that. But, but what? I don't know, like. Going from podcast to YouTube, like videos, and like- it's more editing. And I've got to get, I've got to get cameras. Got to get cameras. Yeah, yeah. It took me this long to get these microphones, man. You could like- do like we could go to the Kobeck Motor Inn. I do like a twenty four hour. Would you come there or not? <laughs> um, okay, for, for the record, <laughs> anyone actually listening to this shit, I suggested we go to that Kobeck Motor Inn and do a podcast. He, from he, there that he night. messages me at two in the morning, like. <laughs> Legit. It was like two in the morning. Legit. Would you do? A, would you do a podcast? And I said, "Yeah, why not?" And you write back, "Yeah, why not?" He says, <laughs> <laughs> "Like room for two, please." <laughs> and we pull up with suitcases. I'll, just, I'll be sitting on a plastic sheet, like just, just, a just plastic looking fucking like sheet. like you're terrified, like a dog that's been crated, like just like scared. If I tell my miss about that, she'll be like, "You need a disinfect when you get home." She'll just have oh, a bath. Yeah, like ready. one of those. Um. Oh. Those ultraviolet, like, uh, silk, silkworm, uh, you know, for, like, uh, radiation, th- uh, yeah. yeah, showers. Yeah. Yeah. No, would you, do, would you do something like that with me? Would you, like... I told you I'd go. Yeah, well, let, let's do something but how, like that. Like, how beat up is the joint? Like, it's fucked up. I, no, but, like, see, I've stayed in, like, <laughs> joints like that before, right? Like, when we were, like, 19, all of us would you know, chip in and get a room somewhere. It's like, worse than that. That's what I'm saying. Is this actually a crack then where shit goes off every yeah, night? Yeah, shit goes off every night. I wouldn't mind coming up just to observe from a distance first. Yeah, man, we could get some Maccas and pretend we're like on a, what do you, what are the cops called? A stakeout. Steak <laughs> <laughs> sit there on a stakeout and yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's a sign that says no parking and every now and again someone will hit that fucking sign, <laughs> you know, the pole. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's always fucking happening over there. All right. Because I don't want, the thing I don't want to do is like book a room and it's just flat. Like it's 130 bucks. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Fuck me, to stay in a crack house. Yeah. There's like man, that's would, not would, cheap. Would you shower there? Though? Oh, I wouldn't touch anything. Would it be like I reckon we'd get it, inspect it, and get the fuck out of there? But like, yeah, sorry, leaving. See you later. It stink like urine. Yeah, it would. It like, would. It would be like cigarettes. Yeah, the, the smell of cigarettes would be prominent. I was just gonna say, like, 130 bucks a night. That that like that's not cheap. I've seen a lot of the on YouTube, like you know, casually being on online at two in the morning, like one star <laughs> reviews. Let's go there, and, uh, <laughs> and they'll, they'll do a video of a one star fucking review place. That's what we should do. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. We should get a GoPro. I've got, I've, yeah, I'll grab a new one. <laughs> Think buying a GoPro. I'm just saying, I've got an old one. It doesn't. It fucking overheats and just turns off now. Really? Yeah. Did you buy it for the bike or the truck? Yeah, I bought it for the bike because I wanted to do like, I wanted to be like, yeah, sick, he's a wheelie. But yeah. then I was like, oh, I'm not doing a wheelie anymore. <laughs> 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 like, ty- <laughs> it just uh, could not be fun. The thing, it just turned into rubbish. Like, yeah. Trying to edit it, trying to get it in the right position. What time is it? Fucking hell, it's quarter to five. All right, we better get out of here. Wow. What time did we get here? It was after 12.30. Well, I left Mac as at one. No, nah, I've got to get out of here. It's fucking late. 
Thanks for coming down here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, just, like, what the fuck did we talk about? I don't actually have an idea. I know we were talking about Greek Easter. Then we were talking about September 11 for some reason. It was just a rant and a rave. Oh, I don't Start know, Start raving mad on a weekend. <laughs> It's just, it's been a long week. It must have been one of those things, like, we, I know you and me have both worked, like, public holiday through and through while everyone's been enjoying themselves. Yeah. And I think we just wanted to come in here and scream a Wait, little bit. today's a public holiday? Yeah. Shit. That's why I keep getting confused with the days. And I'm working. I don't know what day it is, man. I have no, I had no idea today was a public holiday to begin with. Like, I didn't know we had it off until someone reminded me what last am, Monday. What am I going to watch when I get home? Um, I want to watch Solomon. Okay. I haven't watched it yet. As in, like, since we, we talked about it. You scumbag, you already s- smashed it. No, I haven't seen it yet. You I'll said you I'll come over and watch it. I'm like, all right, I'll save it. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll come I'll come down. We'll do the steak out of the... <laughs> we, no, no, we don't have to be there all night. No, no, no. So we'll no, just no. get, like, a kebab or a KFC do something. You have, do you have binoculars? Yeah, I do, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I didn't, didn't have binoculars. Do you know where I got them? I got them from um, Melbourne me. Star. Okay. Yeah. Just, just didn't return him back? No, no. Well, hang on, man. Like, we, got, I got into the star, yeah. and they handed me a, a pair of binoculars in a pack. Like, yeah. it was brand new. It's like, here you go, for your pleasure. I'm like, okay. And then when I left, I was holding on to Does them. Does anyone want this? Does- yeah, I, I remember holding them, and I just sort of got ushered along because it was packed. And in the end, I was in the car park yeah, holding a pair of binoculars. That reminds me of a restaurant I went to one no, time. I was like, does okay. anyone want to take my money? or? <laughs> <laughs> I remember there was a restaurant I went to, and I'm like, they're like, I'll go pay over there. All right, cool. And they're like, I'll go pay over there. I was just there. You guys got to pay over there. Yeah. I'll go back to that. Like, and the lady's like, didn't I tell you to go pay over there? I'm like, but the guy said, <laughs> <laughs> the guy said, she goes, no, go pay over there. Then the guy comes back out, and he's like, mate, you're not fucking listening. I'm like, oh, I, I understand. Don't worry. And I just ended up walking out the door. <laughs> they could have called me back. They had my name and number on the booking and everything. What did you? What was the restaurant? Uh, it's closed down now, but it was of like it has <laughs> too many people not getting <laughs> paid. It was a Spanish joint. I remember, like we ordered like lobster and all that sort of. I'll stuff. I'll be honest, man. I went to the Black Toro in Glen Waverley not that long ago, like before when lockdown started opening up. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Spanish, man. Yeah, it's disappointing. It actually is disappointing. I don't know why. I and- feel like it's almost Greek, not Italian, and it doesn't hit the spot. Yeah, everything about Spain is just. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first trip to Spain, I mean, yeah, you know, riots. Yeah, riots, getting shot at by tear gas. Yeah, it's just the uh, usual look, stuff. I, I didn't mind Spain, but I prefer to be there purely because it was more of a holiday than uh, Barca was. Barca was crap. Okay. You know what I mean? Let's, let, we'll come back to this. Let's organize a little video podcast sort of a thing. Of what? Do you know how to edit videos? I've got no yeah, idea. Yeah, I can. All right, cool, cool. It's not my favorite thing to do, but I can. Extra work? Yeah. That's, that's another reason why I don't do them. It's just extra work. Okay. We'll figure it out. I have to edit. Like, it's the only way it's done, man. I have to edit. And I have to buy the gear. I'd have to buy... Okay, to do a video podcast, all right, think about it like this. I would need at least three cameras. One set on you, one set on me, one set on the table. We can hire an apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> what? The budget is <laughs> today's episode. I've the got budget, a pack of Advil over there. The, the budget, like, we could just get some little kiddies in, like, art school or, like, video school. Yeah, listen, buddy. Hey, man, <laughs> look, we'll... <laughs> Give you like 10 out of 10 on no, this no, one. No, no, you only need basic shit on tripods. So I'd put one there where the macho man is essentially, yeah. just facing me, one there where the Advil is facing you, and then one up there above the TV facing both of us. The one thing that pisses me off about YouTube videos is when the guys like drive away from the area that they're in, and I'm just sitting there staring like, you know, they're probably just going to have to reverse back and grab that camera now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I they, re- they run up some stairs, and I'm like, he's just going to have to run back down in a second. I hate watching... Influencers or whatever on Insta doing a video, whatever it is, and they haven't edited it. And like they're going, they, it shows them going to the phone to stop the recording. Yeah. Take that extra second to just crop the fucking video by like, you know, two seconds and it would look so much better, it'd be so much more professional. All right. But that's me. So we should do, <laughs> we should do a YouTube video of Mr. Whippy. We'll getting get, Mr. Whippy. We'll, 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 we'll try to get a Mr. Whippy van. <laughs> oh, the door. Yeah. Oh yeah, let's let's. <laughs> that's going to work out well. Let's film our criminal endeavors. No, you know no, what I mean? we're, we're, it's not a criminal endeavor. Like ripping Amanda. a door off a Mr. Whippy van. There's got to like, be a Mr. Whippy van, an old one somewhere, just rotting away. Life of crime. If I get you, if I <laughs> this get, is how this is my downfall. Yeah, I'm going to show up here one day with the door. And you're like, what's this? What's on the wall? <laughs> Where'd you get this? Don't worry. Yeah, this will turn into like one of those um, 
Texas barbecue it's, burger joints with all the random crap on the wall. It's like La Pulquera on La Rat Down Street where he's got all the photos like slammed on oh, the wall. Oh, yeah, exactly. It'll be like that and he's got bikes up in the ceiling. <laughs> Rat Down Street. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a photo of him and the president like... <laughs> Here's a question. Where would you go for good Italian in the city? Ah, uh, damn. Um, you know what? I don't know. <laughs> I've got a place on Lagos Street that I go to. Like, it's run by uh, a family. I was going to say, it's probably run by Asians. No, no, no. I always stick my head in the kitchen like who's working in there. (laughs) (laughs) It's like when you go to Stella Tide. Dude, Stella Tide's had a massive fucking line Friday night out the front. Yeah. Massive. It's always packed. Massive. Everywhere was packed on Friday night. Stella Tide's always packed. When when is it not packed? Is it Universal on Lagos Street? How the fuck did that place become popular? Universal. The the, the pizza joint, pizza pasta joint. I don't go to Lagos, man. Too far for me. It's the joint. Too far for me. Too far for you. Two and a half (laughs) Ks. It was just like, just walking past looking at Stella Tights and seeing like Rajnish just working the girl (laughs) in the back. Rajnish. Like, would you be, like, if you end up, imagine, so if you ended up working there, would you be offended if he started telling you how to make tzatziki? Like, you know how to make it. You've been making it 15 years. I know how to make it. Yeah? Did you get offended? I would look at him and tell him to relax. Fuck. Like, I, relax, man. I had a mate who went to... My, well, I've got one of my friends. He, he's a really good chef. And he's just he's just coasting around. And he's like, oh, I'm going to give another another restaurant a try. And he went there. And these guys were like... He, he's, he's run restaurants. He's done it all. He's won an award here and there. And he went to a place and he's like, man, I'm just going to rock up and do fries and shit. <laughs> and the guy's like, man, your fries aren't that good, bro. Because you need to leave them in there for long. And he's like, oh, yeah, okay. Or, and like the the squid that he was doing, they're like telling him off about everything he was doing. Yeah. I was like, you cunts are just fucked. They're just process, man. Yeah. Everywhere you go is going to be different. Everywhere is going to be set in their own fucking ways. That's it. They got told by some dude above them and how to do it. That's yeah. how we do it here, and that's the way. He's like, I just want to yell at these cunts. And I'm like, yeah, you probably do. So you don't work there? Yeah. I couldn't do it. If I was a chef, I couldn't go back to doing fries or anything like that. I want to work at KFC for a day. Why? I just want to see how they do the chicken. As in the actual recipe? No, no. like Not the recipe. Just I want to see how they cook it in those like, massive just, fries. Pa- are they just bread it? Whatever, crumb it? No, I, 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 I want to work in there and be the actual guy who dumps all the chicken in there. Haven't you ever used a fryer before? Yeah, but that's a massive industrial fryer. That thing's like got coils and you actually like drop it right down in there and then you got to like close it like a submarine door. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a... Pr- it's like a pr- it's, yeah, it's like a pressure fryer. Have you, have you ever seen it? Like you lock it and everything in there. Yeah. Like 15 minutes or some shit like that. No, nah, that's like 15 minutes to cook chicken. Yeah. No. Yes. Nah, pig's dick, man. You're telling me it takes 15 minutes. If you go in and there's no chicken in the Bay Marie and you want something and they've got to cook it fresh, two-piece feed. Hey, here's the thing. It depends how long, like, how big that fryer is, what the temperature is. It'll take at least 10, 15 minutes. Oh, let me ask, let me ask my mate you work at the KFC. <laughs> Can I call him? There <laughs> go. Yo. Hey, buddy. How you going? Good, man. Let's crack it. Hey, quick question and just get straight to the point. How long does it take to cook a fried chicken at KFC? Fried chicken at KFC? Um, I'm pretty sure it was... Let me, let me think about it. Um, I think it was 18 minutes. 18 minutes. Okay, cool. Is that because yeah, you put a lot of chicken in there? Yeah, because it's... Cause it's uh, yeah. Because it's because it's all timed, like it's all literally everything's pre done. Okay, it, um, the, when you, you close put it in the, there, when you close the door, it was like a submarine door, right? It was like a pressure cooker yeah. style thing. Yeah, that's that's it. Like it locks, lock it full on locks in. Yeah, you you, uh, you twist the you twist the top, um, then it basically locks in. All right, cool. <laughs> I was just having a having a discussion with my mate, and he was saying, I said to him, it probably takes you about ten to fifteen minutes. We're like fifteen minutes, and he's like, Nah, no way. So yeah, I'll um I'll give you a call later, all right? Easy, man. Easy. Cheers, All right, chat, chat, chat. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that is the first time we've ever had an actual call go through, like, in <laughs> between episodes. So that's my mate uh, from high school, the one, <laughs> the one guy that I speak to, and he worked at KFC, like, growing up all my life. And I remember he would do the Sunday shift, come to school on Monday, and we all had the common room. Yeah. So year 12 common room had a microwave in there. 
and me just slamming all this chicken he would bring, <laughs> just load it up. Like, we'd actually turn the microwave sideways so we could fit all the chicken top down. <laughs> we'd fit the chicken in top Shit. down. And we'd just sit there, keep pressing instant cook. So it wasn't actually spinning. It no, was no, just no, cooking. It was just the instant cooking the shit out of it. And I remember every Monday he would bring in so much, like, because they, they, I, I think he would say, like, they would throw away the chicken or whatnot. Yeah. The, the, so the he most, would yeah. take it home and he'd always bring it for me, me and the boys. I don't go KFC right now. <laughs> I could always go like the rolls. Nah, K- look, K- I've said this before. KFC is the one guilty pleasure for junk food that I have. Yeah, I could easily go KFC right now. I I always I'm get tempted. I get a zinger, but I tell them to get rid of the mayo sauce. Get the pepper mayo and the zinger. Mm. Pepper mayo. I'm just thinking. The only thing that puts me off is the fact that the Rhino KFC is near me. The nearest KFC to me is Crown Casino. It's too far. If you ever make burgers at home, mm. you got to get Martin's potato buns. It's Martin. So it's just the company. They make potato. These buns come from California, oh, and they're just made out loaded of loaded sugar. Oh, they're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they're beautiful. I can't. Like, is, there, is there a KFC around here? Yeah, yeah. Oakley. Is that far? It'd be on your way home. You get. You're gonna take the freeway, right? Yeah. 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 So when you go back out and you're on uh, Princess Highway, yeah. As you turn onto Warrigal Road to go to the freeway, just do a Yui, and there's an. Uh, it's right there on the corner next to Bowery. How many times do I have to say KFC till we get free KFC? Proudly sponsored by KFC. Like Carl's <laughs> Jr. <laughs> like just talking like, have you seen Idiocracy? Pre- proudly presented by Carl's oh, Jr. with with um, Idiocracies with yeah. uh, Mike Judge wrote it, I think. Yeah, he keeps saying Carl's Jr. <laughs> <laughs> there is a Carl's Jr. around here. It's not, it's, it's Hungry Jack's. No, no, no. There's an actual no, like, Carl's Jr. Yeah, Hungry Jack's is, is Hungry Jack's. It's just like. Is it the same burger? Yeah, it's the same thing. I don't know. I've never eaten it. They've been run up in Clayton, I think. I had Taco Bell. That's a lot of food. Never been. I don't like we got some burrito box. Where did you get it? Um, we're down in Altona. Altona, yeah. I've been doing what were you doing in Altona coming back from fishing? Oh, okay. uh, I've been doing a lot of fishing, yeah. Hey, I saw you put up a story at like five in the morning, or yeah. Something. Yeah, so me and my mate Mick, we've been getting up. He bought a boat and he's like, let's just fucking go. So, like, any chance it's good weather, we go fishing. Oh, kudos to you, man. Most Cat- people talk about going fishing, but they never go. I like we've been catching squid, salmon, and all that sort of stuff. Like, so actually, like, <laughs> yeah, actually, like we've had some good days. We've had some fucking really shit days where we just sit there yelling. Where are you fishing boat. in Altona? On you the mean, beach? No, we go on the bay boat ramp when we just go into the bay. In the in the bay, isn't yeah. it all just like oil slicks out there? No, it's actually nice and clean. Like I know it's shit when you get to the beach and you see the families just fucking polluting the sand over but there. Th- yeah, it always gave me this but, filthy look. But once you go out into the bay, it's actually nice. It's clean. It's clear. Like you, Could know, you swim? Yeah, you can. You Have can. you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why the fuck would I do that? Yeah. No, it's it's clean. It's not nothing bad about it. I always feel like if I jumped out of a boat in Altona, I would drown. You know what? I think the water around St Kilda area. Just oh, that's like just, that, just, that's just that, fuck. No. When we went for that bike no, no. ride, that water's fucked. You know what shits me when Greek tourists come here and they're like, "Then they get to go better." I'm like, "What do you mean? Look, Australia's <laughs> got some of the nicest beaches in the world." Okay, mate, that's a cesspit. That's not a beach. So near my house, we've got a river that runs through. My cousin's like, why is the water brown? Oh, that river. They talk about the Mary Creek River that yeah, runs all like, the way to Preston. Like, why, is, why is that brown? I'm like, well, you know, that's how it is. No, ours isn't brown. That's d- disgusting. I'm like, cool, man. You know thanks. what? They can fuck themselves because Greece has got no conscience regarding recycling or sustainability or littering. I remember- Or money. Nah. No. I remember 2000 and. Fuck, man. Maybe 14 when I went. Probably the last time I went. I was in a truck with my cousin. And we're leaving the Hurio and we're going to like doing rounds at other villages and towns in the area. Like he's selling shit or whatever. We're in a truck. And he's got like a like a juice bottle or like a mineral water Humor bottle or something. Like, you know, yeah. Whatever. And like he's drinking it. And as like I've seen him. He's driving the truck. He's finished his bottle. Out the window. No. He got the lid. Like he looked for the lid that was like. In his center console or something. So he's like digging around for it. He's got the lid. So I calmly screwed it back on. And then he was out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Can't let that go to and I, and I was just looking at him like, what the fuck is this cunt just done? Like he actually fingered around looking for a lid. And he did it methodically. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just straight you know, out. You know, I, I hate the wogs who use the, the bottle as an ashtray in the car. <laughs> I remember... We're in your cousin's car, and Paul, <laughs> Paul Mars grabbed the bottle of water. Oh. And he's like, oh, swallowed it. And I was like, oh, jeez. Oh. I think that's one of the most rancid things you could do in a car, yeah. the bottled water it's like with bomb. the ciggies. Yeah. It's like a potpourri of just, 
just stale ash and tar. And it's like, how is that attractive? How is that clean? Like, it makes no sense. No. No way. Like... I don't know, I'm I'm against smoking in cars purely because you're ruining the upholstery. You're ruining I can't it. even smoke, man. Like it just kills me. I'm surprised people still do it. Like when you get a whiff of like actual cigarette smell now, it's so stale. Yeah. It's just like people still doing this in 2022. Like it just doesn't seem like it seems like something like our grandfathers and uncles did. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But it's going to get worse now because the price of these cigarettes are going through the roof, and there's going to be a massive issue. With um, imports and all that sort of stuff, black market. They're already importing it. Yeah, so many people it, I know are buying like. Yeah, my dad buys them. <laughs> 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 like I'm like, what are these? He gets uh, some Chinese guy yeah, yeah, down yeah, the yeah. road. I'm like, what do you mean he gets that? You know, they're, they're twenty bucks cheaper. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, there's a there's a place in Clayton. There's a milk bar that sells them. This woman that was um, training me at one of my uh, jobs, she's like, yeah, we're gonna make a stop here. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> we're in a company car. We don't make a stop here. She jumps out, goes inside, comes back out with like a red packet. With yeah, gold. red and gold. Yeah, red and gold. I'm like, what the fuck are they? Is that cheap? Come a long way from my dad dropping me off at the milk bar and saying, <laughs> get him a pack of like Horizon 50s when I was like seven. And the guy, Horizon 50s? <laughs> yeah, man. Front pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Lighter in there. Like, and I remember growing like everyone had like the Sty- Stuyvesant soft pack, please. And then like oh. 20 minutes later, oh, they snapped. I'm like, that's what you get for having, <laughs> that's what you get for having a fucking soft pack, you dickhead. I'll never forget that. We were probably 19 when that happened, the Stuyvesant soft pack. It became such a cool thing. Like, yeah, mate, softies. What do you mean, man? Like, what's the point? It's a pack of cigarettes. It's terrible. I don't know. Um, now I'm actually craving KFC. I'm just trying to think what I have to eat at home because when I get home, I've got to fall straight into editing. I've got fucking. We've done three hours and 40 minutes. That's beautiful. Boys last night did about three hours and 40 minutes. <laughs> That's seven hours of audio that I've got to edit. Um, I'm just thinking, do I have food? I've got Mikey Ditsa. Do you want to get food? No, I, I, I'm going home. I've got to start work. Okay. If anything, I might like... Um, I'm going to go to sleep. I've got work at... Uh, I've got my midnight shift on. I was looking for a clock, but I saw Jean-Claude. Van Damme. Van Damme. Jean-Claude. <laughs> Jean-Claude. No clocks. No semblance to outside. We've got no, Jean-Claude. It's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. And then there's an ad for Lucky Strikes, man. There we go. <laughs> um, it's five o'clock, dude. What time do you start? 12. So, so I finished today at eight. Um, got out of bed at 11.30. Do you feel so, okay after like three hours? I'm, I'm used to it sometimes. Yeah, it's like me. I was the same. Like if... If if it's something I want to do, like come here and see you, then yeah, like I'm fine. But if it's like me actually going into the city, yeah, like I'll be on death store. Like, why do you normally go into the city? What are your reasons to it's work? Uh, the building head office. Oh, so you're actually going in now? Yeah, I thought you were doing it from home. I am still doing it from home, but like sometimes I got to go get a pass. I got to get my computer, like I because I take care of so many customers. I got to change laptops every now and again. Whereabouts is the building? Uh, I don't even know. Like, oh, okay, city. Yeah, it's CBD. Elizabeth Street. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I get it. I caught the train the other day into the city to go buy a pair of shoes. Very uh, liberating. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I, it was Friday, man. I had enough of work. I'm like, you know what? Stuff this. I've done a big week. I need to go buy a pair of, like, dress shoes because my uh, last pair of dress shoes I bought was, like, four years ago, like, mangled. You know what I mean? I was at BCF, like, contemplating, should I buy this fishing rod? <laughs> like, do, do I just <laughs> BCF? <laughs> <laughs> like, do I deserve this? And my mate's like, just get it, bro. Come on. And I'm like, bro, you got to talk me into it. Come on. He's like, good. It's, it's, it's comfortable. Like, he's trying... Poor guy is sitting there for 20 minutes trying to sell it to me and he doesn't yeah. even work there. It's good. You'll need it. I'm you just know. trying to think. What were the last purchases you made, like yourself, for yourself? As in buying stuff? Yeah. That fishing rod. A rod? Yeah, that's it. Anything else? No. I bought myself... Ah, um, oh, fuck. What have I bought? I got my ring cleaned up. That's something I did. That cost me 100 bucks. My wear, only ring I wear. Just wear, wear and tear, then they, fi- they fix it up and all that I, sort of I stuff. I bought it in Thailand in 2013, yeah. man. It was cheap, like and um, yeah, like the silver, the the actual band had actually snapped. Is it from, was it white gold or was it silver or something? Yeah, like white, yeah, silver, and it just looked worn as shit. So I gave it to them. They replaced a couple of gemstones. Then um, yeah, shinied it up. Looked good. I told my missus if we get married, do I have to wear the ring? She's like, I'll fucking kill you if you don't. I'm not not used to wearing any rings or anything. like I that. I never wore them because I always work with my hands. So yeah. you know, you're liable to lose something or damage it. I will. I asked her, can I have a necklace? And she's like, no. Why not? I don't know. 
just the way I'd she is. I'd say that'd be the, just as, as uh, meaningful. What's the difference? Come on, babe. Just let me wear the it's ring. It's closer to my heart. <laughs> yeah, babe. See, listen to the man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, legit. Uh, she- I'm like that as well, man. I have to coax myself into spending money on like myself, yeah. purely for myself. But man, like you think about it, at the end of the day, like you spend that much on uh, bills and shit. I- I'll just say the final thing. So like everybody knows I went to uni four years and it was like work, uni, all that sort of stuff. And I got to the mindset of like, oh, because of COVID, I was like, fuck, we might not have work for a while. Yeah. Stop your spending. So, like, I stopped all my fucking spending on just little dumb yeah, things. Yeah, little shit that you want. Still have like 400 pairs of shoes, though. I was going to say, <laughs> says me who bought a Razor Ramon figurine as soon as it came out on the market. It's I left it at home like a dumb cunt. That Hollywood Hogan. Okay. Yeah, Razor Ramon, that thing has gone from seventy nine ninety five to about four hundred dollars. Fuck off. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah, seriously. No, 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 hang on, hang on. Don't say that to me now. They're all sold out. They've gone through the fucking roof. I'm hang losing on, my mind. On. I'm getting on eBay right now. All right, everybody. I'd like you to <laughs> like, share, subscribe. You know, <laughs> you know how to do it. Right. Buy, <laughs> buy the coffees, people. Buy the fucking hang coffees. On, Razor Ramon, figurine. Okay. All those pop uh, fuck ones. So they range they range from hundred and fifty without the bat without the box. To like two to three hundred bucks with a box, and if you got the limited edition one, they're about four hundred bucks. Hang on, there's a lot in America where it says like four hundred thirty eight, and then the postage is like a hundred fucking something. I'm not seeing the one I got, man. All those pop ones are here. You know those little those poppy things. They're shit. Yeah, they're shit. I wouldn't. I didn't want one of them. I wanted the actual figurine. Um, not seeing it on eBay, man. They're all gone. I'll send it to you when I get home. They've gone up to four hundred. Yeah, definitely. He was a he was a huge character, man. Like he was great. Oh, it's Razor Ramon, man. I like, did that whole podcast with, about it. I just remember watching it when he came out with the toothpick and like the commentators. He's going to book someone in the eye with that. <laughs> <laughs> Razor Ramon was just the quintessential bad guy, man, and yeah. he epitomised the new attitude, the new era, like that, the new shift in, like you know, just the. Just a take on, on just professional. That photo that you posted up of him the other day where he's sitting down having dinner or something like that. Oh, the... the Just the hand. Yeah, yeah. And, and that just reminds me of like, you're going to get your head kicked in. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like the, the chef dude, like the waiter brings him the bill. He's like, hey, what is this, mate? <laughs> <laughs> you bring Razor Ramon a bill, mate? <laughs> People line up outside, mate. Ah, <laughs> oh, he was so good. And the funniest part is he was just playing the character and... When he bought the character of Razor Ramon to, to Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon hadn't seen Scarface before, yeah. so he thought this was just genius. You know, like oh, ge-. like it's just it's just a take on Scarface. And and um, what's his name? Manny. Yeah. Nevertheless, um, now actually, what, what should I eat? I've got my Yitzza at home. Do you really want to eat my Yitzza? It's going to go off if I don't eat it. Just put it in the freezer. Nah, it's been there from yesterday. Yeah, you just put it in the you freezer. You can't put food in the but, freezer. Yeah, look, here's the thing: you can put it in the freezer, and then you can like. Reheat it the one time. That's it. No, 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 no. Once it's cooked, once it's in the fridge, you can't put it in the freezer after that. Yes, you can. No. Yes, you can. No. No. Oh, I know nothing about cooking. Look, I don't know what makes you think you're qualified oh. <laughs> to talk about food. <laughs> Did you speak to my sister? About that? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 seriously. No, no, no. no, no. You, the you way can. I know it yeah. is that once it cools down and it's in the fridge, yeah. you can't take it from the fridge to the freezer. Because the bacteria has already started to... You can do whatever the fuck you are, man. How about that? You can do whatever you want. I don't want to die. You're not going to die. You'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll be fine. If anyone wants my Yiritsa, just message him and he'll deliver it. He's got a lot, apparently. No, no. It's, it's just a little deneke that my mom gave me. When I went to her house, I was in the car. She's like, you see me the you to get Ah, and she starts like lining up. Did you get, sorry, you didn't ride your bike. I was going to ask you if you got looks, are you still rode that death machine, man? Nah. No, nah, there's no one to judge me. Who's going to judge me? Fuck, I took my other bike for a ride and I just completely forgot how fast it was and I'm like, yeah, I'm not jumping on that again. Are you serious? Yeah, I completely forgot how fast it was. But that's the whole point. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, what the what fuck? What the hell's going on with you? Getting old, man. Getting old. I, like I said, I just want to sell everything and just have my Mongoose Sniper Pro. That's, <laughs> that's worth fucking two grand. For some fucking reason, everyone's trying to sell a Mongoose for two Gs. It's not going to happen, fellas. Fucking stop selling it. It hurts when you see motorbikes going cheaper than pushies. My my bike is the same price as when I purchased it, even more now. Yeah, okay. I um, purchased it 2016 brand new. It's gone through the roof because there's no My car is no pretty stock. similar to that. You want as, as bad as bad as it is. How'd you go with petrol? Oh, no, nah, 
should have messaged me, man. I got the vouchers. <laughs> <laughs> got the Seven Eleven the vouchers. Voucher scam. It, it's not it, a scam. <laughs> not it. Like what I remember. He's like, a Greek from Coburg trying to convince me that something is not a scam. Legit, bro. <laughs> Do um like hundred percent. What if my family doesn't like bread? What if my family likes, <laughs> likes uh, cigarettes? cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be a crime, bud? <laughs> <laughs> what if I don't want to pay two dollars forty for petrol? What if I want to pay a dollar sixty-five? And what if you didn't sell, give them away, but sold them at a price of practically giving them away? Would that be a crime, Bart? No, I don't think Hell so. no. <laughs> Enjoy your gift. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's time to talk. <laughs> Leave it there. It's time no, no, time. we're done. We're done. Uh, like, share, follow, subscribe, blah, 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 yeah, blah. you know Thank what you. it is. <laughs> Hold up.